Hello and welcome. This will be the first video in a multi-part series on how to build and source the Voron V2 printer. For this video, I will do a quick overview of the Voron itself, as well as talking about frame considerations. Now, the Voron V2 is a Core XY movement-based 3D printer by Voron Designs. It is not a kit printer or an off-the-shelf purchasable kit or printer itself. You will have to build it and source the parts yourself. All STLs for the printable files are on vorandesign.com as well as the uh, bill of material and a configurator for helping you decide exactly what components you need to purchase in order to build the Voron of the size you want. There's also a Discord and a subreddit. The Discord is mostly the front of Voron Design, so if you have any questions about the build or the printer itself, please feel free to hop into the Discord and talk to anyone there. We are friendly to help you. Now the printer you see in front of here is a 250 millimeter spec Voron V2. On the configurator, there are four options for sizing your Voron V2. Custom, 250 millimeter cube, 300 millimeter cube, and 350 millimeter cube. Now the Voron V2 is designed and tested for those three sizes, 250, 300, and 350. We do not recommend going above or below those sizes as due to the frame and design as well as the printed parts and the motion system of a Core XY going beyond 350 millimeters leads to adverse impact in print quality. So stick to the stock sizes. Do not be building a 500 millimeter Voron. It will not function like the smaller ones and you will be disappointed uh, in the quality. The frame itself is a 2020 frame. Movement is based on MGN 9H linear rails, and the bed is a Mike 6 cast aluminum tooling plate. Once you have decided what size Voron you wish to build, you will need to begin by sourcing your frame. The Voron V2 is designed with Masumi 2020 aluminum extrusions in mind. Once you have completed the configurator, the bill of materials will list several different sizes of extrusions you will need, as well as some numbers at the end that will be such as TPW. What that number is, is telling Masumi when you go onto their website and input the exact size of extrusion and with those numbers on the end into their search, it will order the exact extrusion length required, as well as any drilled holes and any tapped holes in the extrusion. So that means when the frame arrives from Masumi, all you simply have to do is screw it together. It's already pre-drilled, tapped, and cut to length. Now with the Masumi extrusions and everything being designed around them, you will run into issues if you use Chinese extrusions. Now if you look at the Chinese profile of a 2020 aluminum extrusion, they do look relatively close. The corners are a little bit more rounded, but the biggest issue is this notch right there on the slot for the T-slot. The issue that brings is the rails on the Voron V2 are MGN 9H. Now when you build your Voron and print out the parts, there is a guide that you can print that will allow you to have the rail directly centered over the slot with equal metal on each side supporting it and is perfectly supported. Now you can also have the rail supported equal distant on 2020 Chinese profile, you do not have as much of a purchase of material, the issue you run into is on the Voron V2, the Z rails are actually not centered. They're set slightly inwards. This allows the carriage, which is roughly the same width as the extrusion itself, to clear the side panels once you install them. So while you can inset the rails slightly on Masumi 2020, you cannot do that with Chinese profile extrusions. There are ways around that. If you cannot source Masumi 2020 in your country, you simply have to use a thick foam gasket, for example, on the outside to push the panels off so that the carriage can clear. Now, for joining your frame together, you will see three options in the configurator. Masumi corner cubes, blind joint, and open build cubes. We do not recommend using the open build cubes. They function 
almost the same as the Masumi corner cubes, however, they do not perform the same. So for a blind joint, which is the recommended spec, it is very simple. All it entails is the extrusion will come pre-tapped on the end. You insert an M5 button head screw, and then I do not have it on this one, but on the mating extrusion, there will be a drilled hole. What you simply do is you slide the button head in, you line the extrusion up, and then you would get an Allen key, come through the extrusion, tighten the nut or the bolt, and it will be locked together. And that is your joint. Now the other option is a Masumi corner cube. Now this right here is a corner of a frame that was built using Masumi corner cubes. Some prefer the look of them, however they do add to the price of the frame. They run about uh, $4 each I believe, so that's 8 of them. Now they are covered under this black plastic cap which is removable, and there you can see the cube itself. Now with this, your extrusions are slightly cheaper as you no longer have to have the through hole through them and the ends are still tapped. And the one thing I do like about the Masumi cubes is they do have an anti-rotation nub on each corner. This prevents the ro uh, extrusions from rotating. This is not required though, as because once you put the side panels on, they do act to prevent rotation. So that is the Masumi corner cube. Now one thing that does come up quite often on the Discord is I do not wish to use 2020 extrusion. I already have 3030 profile, inch by inch profile. I wish to use EMT conduit from the Home Depot because I wish to save some money. Can I do this? The answer is no, but yes, but no. Yes, if you take the time to redesign every single part that mounts to these extrusions, you can use a different system. However, the man hours involved to redesign every part, and again, only the STLs are released. There are no step files for the Voron V2 yet. The time to, it would take to redesign everything, work a few hours of overtime, buy a proper frame. You will save yourself in the long run. Everything is currently designed to mount to 2020 extrusions. Everything fits perfectly with 2020 extrusions. Everything lines up, and the advantage of that is this is a 2.1 AB idler. If, for example, down the line, this design changes, you simply just print the new one, remove the old one, and put the new one on. You do not need to redesign your parts to match whatever custom frame design you used. Everything is built, designed, and tested for 2020 extrusions. We recommend you stick with what was recommended and it was designed for. You'll find that a lot on the Voron. It is designed to work a certain way and it has been tested and verified to work that way. Now the last thing I'm going to cover are T-nuts. You will need these for attaching items such as printed parts, panels, uh, anything else to your frame. So there are four different types of T-nuts available. I only have three on hand. The one that I do not have is simply pre-insertion T-nuts. You have to put them in before you assemble your frame. Uh, they're very rigid, they're solid. The disadvantage is once you put your frame together, you cannot add or remove them without disassembling your frame. So we don't recommend them uh, simply for the fact that it makes any potential changes uh, kind of a pain in the butt. The most common T-nut you'll see in the cheapest ones are called hammerhead nuts. These ones are readily available, packs of 50 or 100 on AliExpress. They're cheap as chips. Problem is, while they do insert easy, as you can see, what happens is, is when you screw in the screw, they rotate and they lock. The problem is they don't always rotate properly due to uh, Chinese tolerances when it comes to manufacturing. And they tend to not rotate all the way, rotate a little bit, bite, but not bite fully. And it leads to weak mounting of your parts. They're also a pain because they have a tendency to move very easily while you're trying to assemble items. The one advantage they have though is they are compact and they are cheap. These ones are also a source off alley. These are spring loaded with a ball bearing and they are post insertion so you can insert them 
after you've assembled your frame. And the advantage with these ones is once they are locked in in the extrusion, they don't really move unless you push them. So you're not constantly chasing them around. They're already in position, so when you screw something in, you don't need to worry about them not rotating. Uh, the disadvantage of these ones, there are several locations on the Voron where you need to have two of these right next to each other. Problem is, with them being as long as they are, they are actually too long. So you have two options. You can use one of these and a hammerhead, or these are the preferred T-nut. These are not required by any means, but these make your assembly a lot easier. These are Misumi T-nuts. And you can see instead of a little ball bearing, they have a little leaf spring. These guys insert, again, post assembly. And they lock into place. You can move them if you need to. And they come out relatively easily as well. Now these are only available from Misumi to my knowledge and they are not as cheap as the other two options. Uh, what I do and what a lot of people do, simply get multiple sizes or multiple bags of these style. M3 and M5, you will need both. And then while you're ordering your extrusions from Misumi, pick up 20 or so of these guys in M5 as well. This will make assembling your gantry a lot easier. So that is a overview of sourcing your Voron frame. The next part of this video series, I will be covering motion system, including pulleys, bearings, and the linear rails. Thank you.